Hey, what's up? I got some more lore content for you guys. Now's a great time to get into Legends of Runeterra. There are more cards and game modes than ever before, especially with the addition of Shurima. If you're a new player trying to get into the game, then this is your video. My last 3 beginner decks video was well received, but it's been a few months and the new expansion is coming out, so I wanted to provide you guys with an updated version with Shurima in mind. I made 3 budget, easy to play, and powerful decks that are intuitive for new players to hop on and get that early lead on your opponents. These decks can be crafted using only commons and rares. I wanted to avoid epics because it takes a while to get even 3 epic wild cards, but I will talk about some powerful epic cards to slot in when you do eventually get the resources. I will also talk about champion replacements during each deck rundown, and each deck code will be in the description below. Before I get into the decks, if you're new, please consider hitting the subscribe button to stay up to date with my content. I make deck profiles, beginner friendly videos, gameplay highlights, and other lore related stuff. The road to 5k is going strong and I need all the help I can get, so it'd be awesome if you joined. I also stream on Twitch often, so check me out over there if you're looking for live gameplay. With that, let's get into the deck rundowns. So I designed all three of these decks with new players in mind. I even made a new account, played through the tutorial, and saw what cards I got after about a day of playing. I'm pretty confident you can craft any of these decks within a week, and can make even more improvements the more you play. However, I just wanted to provide a good foundation to get you started. So let's talk about the first one. This is the one I'm mostly excited about, and it's Mono Demacia Elites. With the inclusion of Jarvan, this deck is both beginner friendly and new at the same time with room for development. So let's talk about the specific numbers. First we start off with 3 Scythria because she's just a really good one drop, and she has the Elite tag. This is going to be very important because we're playing a lot of cards that synergize with Elites. Fleet Feather Tracker is a placeholder card right now. Penitent Squire from the new expansion is going to replace Fleet Feather Tracker and provide more synergy with Elites. Next we have Battlesmith because he is just an ambient threat, you put him on the board and he starts buffing the rest of your elites whenever you play them for the rest of the game. If you can keep Battlesmith on the board and protected, you can often outvalue the opponents and just win through stronger board states. Next I want to talk about the Triple Sharp Sight. This is a very powerful buff for Demacia that not only just gives you units 2-2 right away, but allows you to block pesky elusives that are trying to cheese out some extra damage. This can really turn the tides on elusive champions as well, like Teemo or Zoe, in order for you to take them out easy and efficiently. Next we have Triple Single Combat. This is a primary removal tool for Demacia. It's very, very cheap, and it makes your opponent and your unit deal damage to each other. So this is really interesting if you have a strong unit and you have something that's like not too powerful but you just want to get rid of it before it becomes a threat like those elusive champions I just mentioned. Single combat's really good for removing those. Next we have Vanguard Defender. This is also a placeholder for a new card coming out named Honored Lord. I should have him on the screen right now. He is also going to be good Jarvan synergy and he works well with Pentanet Squire who's going to replace Fleet Feather Tracker like I mentioned earlier. Being an elite also really helps because then you can push the synergy even more forward. Next I have Grand Plaza. This is an epic card, so it's not going to be in the final version of this. I just wanted to talk about it. It's going to be very, very powerful. I recommend crafting this right away. This helps Jarvan so much and this helps with the synergy, with the striking and stuff and getting out uh, multiple units, getting out Challenger. It's basically like the Petanet uh, effect, but on a landmark, so this is a permanent effect. You only want to run it at 2 because it recently got nerfed, but this is very, very good. For now though, if you don't have the epic wild card to spend on Grand Plaza, it is okay to replace it with a unit. I recommend Bright Steel Protector just to give allies some barrier and some protection. Next, Triple Vanguard Redeemer is an elite, and you can also get a free draw from it if an ally had died this turn. It's really good at recycling uh, resources and getting you to more units so you can keep up your board pressure. Next Vanguard Sergeant comes down, just really good stat line as well, same as the Redeemer. Uh, Vanguard Sergeant has an effect that whenever he's summoned, you get a 4 Demacia in your hand. 4 Demacia is a one turn big buff effect, usually used for pushing big damage, uh, beating over boards and pushing in lethals. Next Vanguard Bannerman, 
also really good. Since we're playing only Demacia, his allegiance procs. Allegiance says when you summon it, gets the bonus if the top card of your deck is the same region as the region of the card you're playing. So Demacia, of course, we're playing 40 Demacia cards, so this will always hit and it will always be a nice buff for your other units. Vanguard Squire just gets cheaper whenever you summon elites, so pretty good slot in. Also gets buffed from Battlesmith since it is an elite itself, so there's a lot of synergy there. Next we have our champions, Garen. So I'm pretty sure you start the game with two Garens, maybe one. So slot in as many as you can, try to craft them. And in the meantime, you can replace Garens with powerful five cost units like Swiftwing Lancer, who is just a rare, really, really good unit, gets you even more elites to play afterwards. And Vanguard Calvary, another really solid unit. So yeah, Garen, these are good replacements. Lux is in here as a placeholder for Jarvan. Jarvan is going to be an awesome champion to play around, going to be really really fun in Mono Demacia. I think there are a few different directions you can take him and this is the first and easiest way to transition from like a beginner deck to a Shirima deck. Mono Demacia elites, throw in Jarvan, you got yourself some new cards, everyone's playing the cool stuff, and it's just going to be a good time. Afterwards, if more powerful decks come out with Jarvan, you can also easily transition to those decks. Like for example, let's just say that Scout's Jarvan becomes a thing. Well, you can just craft some Quins later on because you've played Demacia, you're kind of used to the strategy, you're okay investing in Demacia, and you already have some of the core cards, and then boom, just really easy to make that deck after. So this Lux is technically not Lux. You can slaughter in early until you have the resources to craft the Jarvins or whatever other Demacia champions that you get from going down the region rewards and then just convert to Jarvan after that. And finally, this is a placeholder. This is not supposed to be Tiana Crown Guard, of course. This is going to be King Jarvan III, so Jarvan's father. He's the seven mana 3-6, that's tough. He also draws Jarvan for you when he's summoned and he gives scout to um, your units if you already have Jarvan on the board. So super, super good synergy there and it's really good top end. And that's all for the Demacia deck. Now here's a live commentary game so you can get a good feel on how to play the deck. Alright, so we're fighting another Demacia strategy. We got Garen and Tarek. Very, very interesting. I wonder how my deck is going to perform with these placeholder cards. Because <laughs> this deck is not really geared uh, to beat what's currently in the game. But this looks like a pretty nice hand, so we'll keep it. I kind of don't want to play Cythria on turn 1 so that I can utilize the buff from Battlesmith. I can play her on turn 3 and be pretty happy with that. Sturdy blades, custom made. So we're going to stack up two Battlesmiths here which is absolutely insane. That's like a super high roll. The finest Demacian steel. And since I saved the Cythria I can play her now and get her double buffed. And then I can start controlling the board immediately even though he just mobilized and we'll have units um come out earlier than they should. So we'll play the Cythria here. That's a nice 1 mana 4-4, four four, ain't it? Attack for uh, 8 damage. And then once I play Bannerman, I think I win. He didn't play a lot early and I don't think his deck has big removal tools. That's a little bit annoying, but not so bad. Oh. He's an elite himself, so he also got double buffed by Battlesmith, and now we just have the board all to ourselves. Like, he could have Sharp Sight or Pale Cascade or something here. Oh, Challenger. Interesting. He's going to hit one of my Battlesmiths. That is A okay. I already got plenty of value from this guy, so I am happy with that. Alright, let's do Fleet Feather Tracker and then check his intentions. We'll see how much mana he spends right now, because I have the good we options. Know, the less we fear. He only spent one mana. That's pretty interesting. So I want to do probably an attack with everything. I have five mana to work with, so I can do a sharp sight and single combat combo. One way to test him out. So yeah, let's attack with everything. He's probably going to block Hold Garen to 3-3. Three, three. Yep. And what then I'm going to threaten single combat. Let's do single combat here. I could also do sharp sight in conjunction, but I'm kind of okay with this. I want to use sharp sight as a reaction. Like I could do it right now, but I'm pretty confident he has some kind of buff in his hand for four mana. 
could have a plethora of things. He could have his own sharp sight. He could have Bastion, Pale Cascade, lots of things they have to think about. And worst case scenario, he just lets it go through. Garen still dies, and I don't get to kill the 1-3, which is not too bad for me. I still get in 7 damage. And if that happens, I have the mana to play Redeemer since something died. So this is just the overall safest play. Oh, he's doing his own single combat. That's interesting. So now I can definitely do the sharp sight here. This will make them kill each other right away. I'm kind of pressured to make this play because of his single combat. Mine fizzles because they die, and I still get to hit the 1 3 now. Overall, not too bad for me. I dealt with his threat. With a little time, I'll have a breakthrough. Okay, I pretty much uh, have to win like next turn though, because I'm out of resources. This is supposed to be Jarvan the third. And ends at the top. Um, yeah. I guess I kind of have to pass. I don't want to play Redeemer without her effect. I don't think I can win yet, so let's do this. A is worth ten and then we'll play for Demacia. That should be a really good this game ender. Oh. Okay, I'm pretty sure we win here. Unless another single combat maybe? Oh it is. Okay, so I don't win, but I get to kill everything on his board. And I don't okay, I only lose one thing in return if he blocks. I'll do my best. Not the egg. He got this Emprian for free from Egghead Researcher because it's a dragon. That's pretty interesting. It's a really strong card. So close. Okay, I still have board and he's at 5 HP, so I just have to finish up. Yeah, I guess I'm going to cheat and play uh, the, the placeholder card. New recruit reporting in. Take your place. We've much to do. <laughs> I just won off of it, so I guess it's a good card if you can somehow uh, muster her up before you need to replace her with Jarvan. Superior tactics, iron will. Alright, that was definitely cheating though, but still, a good showcase on how the deck plays out. The next deck that I want to cover is my personal favorite. For all of you aggressive players out there, I got you a nice spider deck to climb with. You start with um, really good spider stuff when you're a new player. You get double Elise, double Darius, and that's pretty much all you need on top of just the basic spider package. I refined the numbers a little bit and put in some extra stuff, so I'll talk about replacements as we go. So starting off, we got the triple hapless aristocrat, the triple precious pet for our one drops. Very, very powerful one drops. They have spider tag. Uh, hapless aristocrat has to die first to get to his spider tag, but he's a good blocker. He's basically a 2-2 two -two split on two bodies. So it makes him a little bit of a sticky early game unit and he can deal with one HP creatures. Really, really awesome. And there's a lot of synergy with the early game. If you can get him killed, get out some other spiders and level your Elise, you have really great early game pressure. Next we have Arachnoid Horror, who is a two mana three, two Fearsome. Fearsome is very powerful because units that have two or less attack can't block him. So you're going to get in like three damage attacks here and there early on before your opponents can play like stronger units to block him and it's awesome because he's a fearsome blocker himself so he doubles up he can actually block enemy fearsomes while being fearsome as well really really good aggressively set a two drop next we have elise who is also fearsome uh two three and whenever she attacks she summons a one one for free really really good i think one of the most insane uh attack two units in the game i've i love elise i still play her to this day in my mono shadow isles deck and playing around her spider synergy in this deck is very very fun i don't get to do that very often so that's why this is one of my favorite decks to play even if it's considered like a beginner deck when she levels up she becomes even more powerful all of your spiders get challenger so you can determine what they're hitting and stuff and if you're buffing your spiders and whatnot also while doing this you get in a lot of value and you get in a lot of damage so she's a really fun play around next we have glimpse beyond this is one of the best draw cards in the game uh, I'm really glad that it's Shadow Isles because we get to utilize this tool in pretty much all of our decks. Kill an ally to draw two. So you use this in response to opponent's removal spells. Like let's say you have your Arachnoid Horror out and it's about to be Mystic Shotted. Well, you can just react with Glimpse Beyond. It, spell chains resolve backwards, so Glimpse will activate first. Killing your guy, drawing two, and their Mystic Shot just fizzles out. Really, really awesome reactive card. 
Next we got House Spider. House Spider is basically a 3-3 split among two bodies, and both of them are spiders. So obviously you can see the synergy between Elise and House Spider and just generating a whole bunch so that you can get her level up. Super sick. Same with Vile Feast. It's a deal one damage to anything, so this is really good at hitting one HP targets that come out early or high priority targets like Zoe, and then you also get a spider from it, so double up on the value there. Next we have Arachnoid Sentry, so this is going to be an optional pick. He is right now a placeholder for me. He's taking the place of Soul Spinner. I think Soul Spinner is going to be a little bit better in this aggressive styled mid-range spider deck. So Arachnoid Sentry or Soul Spinner, both optional. Luckily Soul Spinner is going to be a common, so it's going to be very easy to craft him. Next we have Triple Culling Strike, which is just one of the best removal tools in the game. It hits so many things in the meta, it hits so many things all the time. You can kill so many high priority champions with this that you don't want to get developed early. So it's just really really flexible and that's why it's in here. Frenzied Skitter is amazing spider synergy, buffs all your spiders, uh, reduces the enemy's attack by one, lets your fearsomes get through more. If you stack multiple Frenzied Skitters in the same turn you get really big attack turns. So it's one of your like reliable finishes as well. Next we have Crowd Favorite. Crowd Favorite is awesome in this deck because if you go wide by playing a bunch of spiders then Crowd Favorite gets super big buffs and then also has Overwhelm which pushes in extra damage even if it gets blocked. Next this is another placeholder card. Legion Veteran is going to be replaced by Shrieking Spinner, another new spider we're getting from the Shreem expansion that I'm super excited about. He's a 4 mana 2-5 attack, grant spider allies 1-0. Oh, that's so cool. He has a lot of HP, which is something we've needed on spider bodies, and he also buffs attack, so he just does it all. And I'm very excited to get a 4-drop spider to take up the slot. Next I have Triple Darius in here. I know you start the game with 2, same with Elise, so these can be replaced. You can just, you know, start with your base set stuff, try to craft the extra champions. And I started out with one Pharaon, so I'm pretty sure most people do. So slot in the Pharaon, and then you can just do whatever else you want for the remaining two slots. You can do other aggressive options. You can do, uh, like, Legion Grenadier is pretty nice because he gets in cheap damage. You can do buffs, you can do removal, like Black Spear is good. Uh, Iron Ballista is a good overwhelm unit if you want to push in damage. Might is really good. So this is where it's like a little bit optional, however you want to play. And that's like the cool thing about Legends or Terra is you can like mess with the numbers uh, here and there, take out two or three cards, put in two or three of your own spicy picks, decimates a great finisher. You can do double grasp of the undying. Uh, you can do withering whale if you're getting outvalued on the board and you need to deal damage to a wide variety of things. Vengeance for killing big units you can't deal with. All super great options. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to throw in Double Vengeance and call it there, just so I can deal with enemy Dariuses and such. And that's it for the Spider Rundown. Now here's a live commentary game of this deck, so you also get a good feel on how to play it. Alright, so we got Spiders into Scouts. Scouts used to be a very popular, aggressive mid-range style. However, it got a couple nerfs, one hit to Misfortune and one hit to Grand Plaza, and then it kind of fell out of favor. But I think it's still like an okay deck. It's very good for beginners as well. I like that their name is Walk the Plank. That's very fitting. I have a lot of respect for this guy and he's got the whole Bilgewater theme. I like this a lot actually. So we got spiders versus pirates. That is okay. So I'm going to play House Spider. I'm pretty sure he's going to play Misfortune next turn, so I kind of want to save Calling Strike mana if possible. I don't think I can though, that's the thing. So instead I'm going to play Arachnoid Horror, and then attack with only Horror to try to threaten this 3-3 here. Oh, back. never mind. I'm not threatening nothing, that is just a pass. Just fine by me. No problems so far. I have 6 mana, I'd like him to play MF this turn. Valor. Um, okay. Frenzy good on defense is really good here. This hurts the value of his challenger units. Because now he can't snipe my Arachnoid Horror, and he also can't kill my House Spider. Alright, let's mess some folks up. So that's a scout. That's fine. Yeah, it's gonna hit 2 1, I guess. That's the only thing you can trade into now. Oh. 
Um. Okay. I guess. Is he going to trade his other one one into that? If so, it's not really like the best play. I think I got a two for one deal out of this skitter. I'm pretty sure that's what he's doing. Yeah, he saw that's not very good value. Why didn't he attack with Grizzled Ranger? That is a mystery for sure. So let's do Precious Pet into Skitter again. And that should take Nothing all of his units below Fearsome blocking range. So all my Fearsomes are growing in this turn. We can also do Culling Strike on the Quinn now, so that Quinn doesn't block like my 3-2 or something. He has no uh, no mana, so there's no reaction to that. So this is 14 guaranteed damage, and I could attack with these two just to take out things. Why not? Sure. Dash, get him. I want to limit what he has on his board. Say your farewell. Especially since I can just fill up again with my house spider. Crowd favorite's pretty good here. I can probably do let Valor kill something, play house spider, then play crowd favorite, and it'll be maximum value crowd favorite, and then I attack with them next turn, and like vengeance whatever tries to block him, and then his damage will just go through. And that should be a victory. Uh, except I have to worry about this tracker, actually. Tracker is going to kill something as well. Kind of annoying. Still going to get our two for one deal on this unit and then play crowd favorite. Oh, nice. He let me get max value crowd favorite. Perfect. I definitely thought he was going to attack, but he played another unit. Very good for me. Nice, and that will be it. My next attack turn, I'm pretty sure I win. That's unfortunate he only opened Quinn and not Misfortune. Although I did have Culling Strike for her, so I guess I wasn't that afraid. But yeah, that's pretty good aggro showcase of spiders. I got to control the board and do a whole bunch of damage in one turn. And the final deck I want to cover is the Ash Frelior deck. This is mainly because you get Ash as your 7 day login bonus and you get 2 Ashes for free on top of really good Freljord stuff. So this is basically aimed at giving you really good experience for Freljord, but not really transitioning too hard into Shurima. You could go into Lissandra stuff, but it's a very different deck style than this one. However, you'll still have some overlapping cards, so that is a great um, transition if you really like the idea of Lissandra. But for now, we're rocking Double Brittle Steel because it's a really good Frostbite. We're playing a lot of Frostbite Synergy stuff because this helps level up Ash, and she is one of your win conditions. Next we have Omen Hawk as our first unit, 1 mana 1-1, one, one, really really strong, one of the best 1 drops in the game in my opinion. You always have good targets that it's going to hit on top of your deck, and you get the value throughout the game while you're playing Omen Hawks. It's really cool to hit like Omen Hawk and then play that one and you hit something else, so something else is buffed too too, because these can stack, and it gets out of control pretty fast. Next we have Averosian Sentry because he's just a really good draw card, 2 mana 2-1. Two, uh, he has enough attack to deal with most things early, and he just draws you. It's really really good because sometimes this deck can run out of steam, so the extra draws go a long way. Icefell Archer because he's a really annoying unit, he's a fearsome blocker so he can deal with Arachnoid Horror and stuff like that, or Elise. And he also frostbites things on the turn that he comes down, so he's very good on defense too. Next we have Legion Drummer. Legion Drummer is a very good attacking unit and she basically combos with Trifarian Glory Seeker. So the combo here is you give Glory Seeker quick attack. So Glory Seeker will grab something for 5 which is absolutely insane as long as she's not dealt with via a spell. And then you can beat over something basically for free because of the quick attack bonus. And then you can get even more attacks with Trifarian Glory Seeker and keep using her as a unit based removal option. Next we have Double Troll Chant, one of the best combat tricks in the game. For 2 mana you can swing a fight heavily in your favor, or you can swing 2 separate fights that are going on also in your favor. Really really good and really versatile. Should be an auto include in most uh, Freljord decks. 
Next, we have Triple Everosion Trapper. Uh, really good stats, just a 3-3 body, and he also puts a 1-mana 5-5 in the top 3 cards of your deck. Most of the time, for some reason, you end up top decking him and you just kind of beat your opponent through value because you just have a 5-5 uh, on turn 4, so that's pretty crazy. Next we got Culling Strike, as mentioned in the Spider Rundown, very versatile removal tool, probably one of the best, and I have it in here just as a flexible option to get rid of high priority threats. Next we got Double Flash Freeze, more Frostbite synergy for Ash, you'll love to see it, really really good at leveling her, really good combat trick to use, just snap at people. It also stops a lot of elusive strategies from working, a lot of like Ezreal, a lot of Zoe, things that need to hit you. It's also really good against Fiora, which we will be seeing a good amount of, uh, I think, since she has been rising in popularity and has been good for a while now. Next we have 2 Ash. I only have 2 Ash in here because that's how much you get from the login bonus. If you can craft the 3rd Ash, then that's perfect. You definitely want 3 of her in here to get um, get her out as often as possible. Babbling Beard, really really good. Draws your 5 plus power units. That would be Ash and also the rest of your late game. So he is a targeted draw card. So it adds to the consistency of this deck. Next we got 2 Braum. Uh, you start off with 1 or 2 Braum, I'm pretty sure, so that's why he's in here. You can replace him for the 3rd Ash when you craft him. Aversion Hearthguard is a good 5-5. Uh, five five. He buffs the rest of your deck, basically Omenhawk effect, but for everything and not just the top 2. He's also searchable by Bjerg, so really really good if you're curving. Next we have our 1 Darius. This could also be 3rd Ash or whatever you want. Darius is just a good finisher. Um, I'm pretty sure I also have Trindamir in here as another finisher, so if you don't want to do one Darius, you can do two Trend, vice versa. If you don't like Trend, you can do two Darius, whatever you have basically with your resources. Uh, double Harsh Winds, really good for Frostbite. Of course, good for Ash, good for attacking because when Ash levels up, opponents that are Frostbitten can't block, so you just get in a lot of damage. And Captain Pharon for a good game ender. I started off with Pharon, so I'm pretty sure most people do. Just one Pharon is a good slot in as long as you're running Noxus, because he's just a consistent late game finisher. And that's it for the Frogger deck. Now here's yet another live commentary game so you can get a good feel on how to play the deck. Alright, now we got my really funny looking Ash deck with four different champions versus Freljord Fiora. I did mention that I should have an okay time against Fiora, so... We shall do this. I'm going to keep everything. Harsh Winds is an okay pitch, but I'm just going to keep it because I like to have extra Frostbite. So I'm going to start with Omenhawk. If Omenhawk dies to Fiora, that is okay. It's just one hit. You don't want Fiora to kill four things or you automatically lose. One thing is fine though, so... That should be good. Um, do Glory Seeker. The blade, secure the kill. It's fine. We're getting six damage here. I don't want to threaten the Fiora yet because I don't have the mana to actually do so. They would fall by Let me my see. Blade. So I can do a Frostbite Calling Strike play next turn. Rather than try to force Kalang Strike now, because Kalang Strike just gets beat out by Sharp Sight. I will cut you. Try me. That is okay. So, let's do the Kalang Strike now. See what he does, and then I can Frostbite after as a response. Stand alone, huh? Nothing to hold me back. Well, that's gone. That's why Frostbite is a really good counter to Fiora. That is one Fiora down. I'm pretty sure there's nothing you can do for three mana to stop this. Yep, okay. Alright, that game didn't fully count, so now I got another one for you. Gonna do Karma Lux. Very interesting deck, haven't seen this in a while. Karma Lux used to be popular. And it was um, really, really annoying to fight. So we're going to get rid of everything, try to find our early game units, try to find Ash. Sentry on 2 is good. Playing Trapper is also really good. Sentry. I can see the Nebastian border from here. With a little time, I'll have a breakthrough. That's fine. Okay, so I'm going to play my Trapper now. I 
am something nice. of an aspiring trachologist. Trapper into Trapper is going to load the top end of my deck with Yetis. If I can draw it right here. Oh, top deck Yeti would have been so good. I'll do Brom though, actually. Let us get going. Brom's great because after I hit one of these researchers, I'm just going to get a free 3 3 Poro with Overwhelm. I'm true. Show me your best. Literally free. Come back later. This gives me pretty good control of the board now. That lake, it's absolutely stellar. Okay. That is fine. We've got Ash. Ash is very good here. Especially in conjunction with Braum. I can manipulate the attacks in my favor. Interesting. I wonder what he's planning on doing here. Let's do this. I'm gonna see what spell he's trying to do to beat this. Oh, nothing? I have mana for harsh winds. I wanna play this Ash. Oh, he's just doing Radiant Guardian play. That makes sense. Let me tell you about Avarosa. So this is going to be really annoying for him. Let's also play Omenhawk. Show them the way. Because literally, why not? It is easy, see? Okay, so we can do this. Can grab that. No. We're going to grab this. Because this is going to be Frostbitten. If he tries to buff this to kill Braum, I have another Frostbite. Ionia has ways to stop spells, but not my burst ones. Stay back. Deny nor Nopify can do anything about burst freezing, so I have an edge in this matchup, I think. Yeah, so far so good. I'm on the way to getting this Braum leveled up as well. He only needs one more damage on him. Screeching. I'm going to replace my Omen Hawk with Hearthguard. Our strength is yours. Maybe I should have done that before attacking, but I didn't want Screeching Dragon to come down and mess up my attack turn. I'm gonna keep Yeti in hand for now, because I'm pretty sure something dies. Oh, this is so good. I'm gonna have Ash level next turn. Oh. You love to see this. There's not a lot he can do about it either. Very interactive gameplay of he's going to try things and then I'm going to say no. Nah. You're getting frozen. Time to actually let it go. The sun is shining. We sure. should too. That is fine. Let's brighten up their day. Mhm. Mm it's interesting he doesn't try to kill my ash. I think that would be worth it for him if I didn't have a frostbite and 9 that minutes to work with. Unworthy. Okay. Oh, I get to do this, and I get to do that, and I get to do this. This is good for me because I want Sentry to die anyway, so I can replace him with the Yeti. And this is just, you know, good damage back, and this is a trade. Alert the villain. Completely in my favor. Hope burns on. And we'll do Yeti. It can't be. And we're going to do something that's very, very fun and interactive. Check this out. This is called Burst Speed. You're not allowed to play. My aim is true. So, as I briefly mentioned earlier, Frostbitten units can no longer block. So I can either Frostbite this, but I actually don't have to because Ash is going to Frostbite it on attack. And that is just a lot of damage that he can't do a whole lot about. Can't even do like a judgment or anything because I have an out to it. Deep meditation, sure, go ahead, fish for some spells. Let's see what you got. There is no way out of this. I wouldn't believe it even if it happened. Ash is so cool, man. Okay. I've been oh, my too long. no longer zero attack, wait. It's starting.
He's doing it. I don't think it's enough. You have to come up with one more, one Shine more thing. With me. Like he'd have to block once, one six here, and then single combat the three one. Then he could live with one HP. That's if he is uh, running single combat. Oh, he is. That's not enough to live though. He could have lived. Look, look. All he has to do is block Lux here to 6-6. Six, six. He single combats just like this and he only takes 8. Alright. I don't know, it's pretty hard to come back from. I guess also if you lose Lux here. Technically could have lived, but I don't know if it matters too much since I'm that far ahead. So yeah, those are the decks and the showcase games. These decks were primarily made to use your starter cards in order to get resources built up for other decks. Some decks I recommend are Jinx, Draven, Discard, Aggro, because you start off with a good chunk of that deck. Getting multiple Jinxes early means it's a very good direction to go. Also, Mono, Demacia with the proper champion cards like I mentioned, getting in the Jarvan and whatnot, and maybe the Grand Plaza slotted in, also really fun uh, direction. I really, really have high hopes for Jarvan and Demacia strategies moving forward. Also check out Ash Sedge if you like the Ash deck. It's very similar, just more potent, more consistent, and um, it's a really, really competitive deck that has a good standing in the future. I think it's a great long-term deck to learn and get into. Some other decks to look into that are not part of the base set are Pirate Burn if you like playing full face aggro, and Deep if you want a solid control deck that doesn't feel too slow. I played both of those in the tournament recently, and I went 4-1, which is top 64 in all of NA, so they perform very well for me even in tournament format, so they can definitely provide some good wins for you. Another deck to note is Zombie Anivia, if you like a very slow game with lots of stalling and heals. And that's it for this one. Please like and subscribe if you thought this video was informative or entertaining. It really helps me out since I'm still trying to grow. I'll be releasing more deck profiles, guides, and gameplay highlights in the near future. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one. Laters!